Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you might be. We are here today with an action-packed 425 show. An action-packed. Action-packed. Action sounds, yeah. sounds like a Die Hard movie. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So, how are Talking you? Talking about story? movies, we watched uh, In the Heights yesterday. Well, we'll try to. It's a long movie. It's a three and a half hour movie. Movie musical? I don't know how you call it. It's a musical, I guess. And the consensus is that it's pretty awesome. If what's you it called? In the Heights. In the Heights? What's it about? In the Heights. HBO Max. Talking about HBO Max. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, give a shout out to our very good friend and intern at HBO Max for making the news yesterday for yep. all the good reasons. First of all, <laughs> there was no security compromise. I don't get why people are so upset about one email making it their uh, mailbox. And uh, I hope he gets rewarded for finding an issue in their integration test. Yeah. I know. I do too. It's pretty awesome. I got it. I, I, was, it. I saw everybody talking about it and I was like, wait, I don't have it yet. I was, I, I was having FOMO, out. man. I was having FOMO. I was really left out. Yeah. So it was, uh, so I found it later. It was pretty funny. Exactly, Beat O'Brien. Exactly, integration test email. I yeah. wish, I wish my first intern thingy was as, uh, <laughs> as not as I would say. What's the right word? Innocuous as this one because I really screwed up by deleting thirty-four thousand records from the production <laughs> database. That that was that was my baptize of fire on screwing up as a as a new developer. Nice. See, there are worse things that can happen. That's true. They're fine. <laughs> See, I didn't. I didn't have an internship because, uh, you know, there aren't many internships for music education. Yeah. Um, but I did have a help desk job before I switched to doing SQL and then went into development. And uh, I want to hear your screw up. Come on, tell us. Well, so, so there was there was a lady who was going on maternity leave. Uh huh. And she wanted to have an auto responder go out to everybody <laughs> who sent her an email. Okay. Uh oh, because <laughs> she was she was gonna be out for like a year, like nine to twelve months or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So she set it up. It was cool. It worked. Whatever. And then another lady went on on leave, and she's like, "Well, I love that. I want that too." So I was like, "Okay." So I went and set it up. <laughs> and before too long, uh, something happened, and they ended up emailing each other. Just like smoke pouring from the from the exchange server, from you know. Same server. So then, oh, you know, man. a few hours later, nobody got any mail. <clears throat> the, the store process was hung, and there was no space, and yeah, it was a mess. Mm. <laughs> I, I've done my so. first. I mean, we could have a whole uh, hour, but once I restarted the BlackBerry server on my, you know, back in the day, you had BlackBerry servers that were relaying all the messages to the enterprise, and I oh, yeah. I stopped all the blackberry blackberries from working for about three hours while i was restoring blackberry from backups which was not fun well it hung so i had to do something and one of them hey retro retro 595 i think that's the right 959 so i did that i've done deletion of databases i've sent private company data to a uh, different client and nice. the only reason why I found out is because the email bounced. Nice. And, uh, well, that's good, I guess. <laughs> and the, the person that was supposed to receive it was not there. I suspect that it was a catch-all email address that, uh, that was delivered anyway. But my manager and me both received the auto response at the same time. And that was dread. That was literally yeah. dreading the, the consequences of that. Uh, I got a reprimand for it. I remember that was a... Good day. This is like uh, the uh, remember that episode of The Office where they all start talking about how they have immunity and they can do they can talk about anything they wanted to, <laughs> anything they did. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh no, no no don't do that <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> That's where the, we're gonna end up. <laughs> and the most recent one is I was at the client site. They screwed up their monitoring, so I went to the production web app and deployed App Insights to the live site. And if you have App Insights, the SDK, and you deploy App Insights as an extension to the web app, it breaks. How did I find out? 
<laughs> their uh, <laughs> the system stopped working and responding, and I was there sitting. I was like, man, I need to tell them. So, so I fixed it. Yeah. Years ago, I worked at a place, and uh -huh. uh, they did um, part of the H part of HR's uh, process every month was for four hundred one k processing was you know, do this in Excel, do this in Excel. And the number three was call Lucas. And Lucas was a dude, you know, in our team. <laughs> so then you know, he, so he would go, he would go run some program. So when I quit, my 401k kept vesting for like nine months. <laughs> I was like, okay, I can get down with this because, wow, you know, manual human being process. And um, yes. we had another guy retire and they, um, he was still getting money. No, no, we had a guy retire and, a few weeks later, somebody called and they said, "Hey, we can't find this form that uh, that he had oh, built for us." Wow. It was InfoPath. That's how long ago this was. This is when people wow. still used InfoPath, and um, it was the thing that started the whole like project reporting cycle mm -hmm. for the whole month. And so it was like a mad scramble to uh, figure it out backwards. So, like, so what apparently they do? people people read reports then. Because yeah. remember how many reports you've set up in your lifetime, and then you you always wonder: Are people actually reading these reports? Because they go out to some <laughs> middle management yeah, exactly. who never hear back until something breaks, and yeah. they, they either never complain, which means they never read them, or they start complaining because they use them. It's usually I worked the first at a, I worked at a big bank that has its headquarters in Charlotte. I don't want to say their name, but they're big and they're across America. <clears throat> um, and I remember we were putting together reports on our uh -huh. app and like app usage and all that sort of stuff. And okay. you know, I'd, I'd get all the data and stick it into the PowerPoint and I'd send it over and they'd say, we don't like these numbers. And it got to the point where they would just send a blank template and say, could you put these numbers in there? Wow. <laughs> Infopath. Like, well, Info you know. Oh God. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. I Info learning that. Infopath. Yeah. What, the place I worked, that was Infopath and SharePoint were hardcore. Like mm -hmm. tons of people did them, so I don't know. <sighs> anyway, so anyway. how was you? You, uh, you have a good week so far, Christos? I I had ups and downs this week. It was weird. <laughs> so super productive for the first part, and then I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, it was Wednesday. It was super failures, like back to back failures. Nothing was working. Trying to help people do stuff, and <clears throat> I got so tired in the end. It's exhausting sometimes when when you fail and you stare at the screen and it's like, what is going wrong? Am I stupid or am I stupid? And, uh, you know, I worked it out in the end. I learned something valuable, but uh, yeah. it's been a good week. Uh, it's, it's, it's been done. a fun week. And today is supposed to be a holiday. So I don't know if you're a federal employee. Uh, Juneteenth is supposed to be celebrated today. Nobody know, knows about it. So it's like a, it's a very weird kind of holiday because it just got voted. Might might take it easy day after the stream. I've got some TikTok videos to do, and then that's me. We do have a uh, uh, so our Steve Smith, our Dallas. He's doing a stream um, Shit, right I after hours. Yeah. Today? Yes. So he's yeah. We're one. gonna be rating him. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do one. We're gonna leave here and go to our Dallas to see. Uh, he's gonna do some identity stuff today, so that'll be super cool. But yeah. right now, Christos, I understand you got some news. Okay, so okay, what you got? Well, I think the biggest one, the biggest one that everybody has been anticipating is Visual Studio 2022 has just dropped their first preview. There were internal bits that people could try on, but it was fairly unstable. Right now, this is uh, this is almost ready for playing around. So, and for people that don't know, it's been what three years in the making because the last one that we announced was in 2019. So there is a 64-bit upgrade, which is apparently something very big, especially for C++ projects. That was always an issue discussed. I don't think I've ever had issues with C Sharp. JP, ever come across issues with C Sharp and 32 bits? No, not really. No, I think it's a mm -hmm. C++ and large projects. Yeah. Then it comes with .NET 6, which has just dropped Preview 5. There will be a link for that. And there is uh, improved IntelliCode. There's new capabilities for IntelliCode, which I haven't had a chance to play around with yet. Uh, for people asking, there is a community edition, which is always free. So if you want to go and download and you don't have an enterprise or professional license as part of your company, then please know that uh, there's a full-blown 
community edition for free. I think the limitation there is you need to be less than five people in your org working on the project. So if you're a startup uh, under five people, you can still be using you can still use a community edition, and you need to be making less than one million dollars in um, gross uh, <laughs> revenue. That's- that licensing sounds familiar. Hmm, where have we heard that before? <laughs> where have you heard that before? Where have we heard that before? Um, I, don't know. I didn't. I, you know, to be honest, I didn't realize that Visual Studio Community had those restrictions. Um, so that's news to me. I didn't know that. Well, well, I used to be in marketing, and I used to be, you know, responsible for doing these things. Um, I have to say that these limitations are there in paper. But Microsoft has never really pursued anyone for having six people or making yeah. 1.1 million. To be honest, it's it's there's flexibility, but there are tools and capabilities in the inside the professional and enterprise editions that you don't get on the community one. Therefore, a lot of people, especially around debugging and uh, you know uh, advanced oh, capabilities, are dangerous. I, so I I found it. It says any individual can use Visual Studio Community as an individual. So mm-hmm. even if so, even if you work at a big enterprise, but you're doing work that like, you're not building software for work, but on yep. your own, you can use it. It yep. says for orgs, unlimited users in classroom, academic research, or contributing to open source. So if you're doing a lot of open source, Ooh. you can use Ooh, all nice. you want. Um, nice. If you are a non-enterprise, you can use mm-hmm. five users. You can have up to there five. Yep. Enterprise means anyone with over 250 PCs or over a million dollars in annual revenue. Right. That, but you're still entitled to do like open source and learning and personal that, projects, yeah. Yeah, so you can still do the things you can do. You just can't build software for your organization if it's bigger than 250 PCs. Mhm. Which is like hey. that feels like a very old school <laughs> old school method of uh, of licensing with licensing. Like PC counts, yeah. It's been a while, you know, and the the team is trying to modernize the licensing around it. So we might see more flexibility or more uh, modern ways of measuring uh, what a good license should be. Yeah. Next one, uh, slightly unrelated to Visual Studio, but related to cloud. We have the new Azure Data Tables library, which uh, is a new unified library for for any language that you want to use. And it works across Cosmos tables and storage tables. So one API to rule them all. And therefore, so now we have three. Li- so now we have three table libraries: Windows Azure Storage, uh-huh. Cosmos tables, which work yes. for both. Yes. And now this one. This is the new one that replaces the Cosmos tables. <laughs> ah, okay, that's yes. good. But it doesn't uh, because tables doesn't have. Tables doesn't have AAD support, right? You're stealing so, my thunder. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I reached out to the team because if you scroll down, the first thing I noticed is that they were instantiating the client using a connection string. I was like, no, no don't do that. <laughs> Why are you doing that? You're the same team that does the other SDKs, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we are. So I was like, why are we not having support for, uh, for credentials, like the Azure credentials, which should be the standard? based on the Azure core and the Azure identity libraries. And I complained about it and they said, well, it's part of the next sprint. So right now there is a a package that allows you to test it. It hasn't been published yet, so it's internal only, but expect the next release, release, which should be mid-July, to support Azure credentials out of the box for this uh, library as well. We want to have consistency there, so that's important. However, I think it doesn't support Cosmos tables authentication. So it will only support storage tables with Azure AD, not Cosmos tables with Azure AD. And that is an underlying service limitation, not a, a library limitation. So does that mean that we're going to like that tables are going to support Azure AD soon too? Because right now it's only blobs and queues in storage. I so think I'm that's changed that... because, because the library supports it right now. If it wasn't supported in the underlying service, they wouldn't be able to do it. What what library supports it? Can you send me a link? Uh, I can send you a link internally. That's fine. I, I have it. Yeah, I'll send you a link. I'm just curious because um, it's the same guy that we're talking yesterday, Chris uh, something. Okay. And uh, Scott Scott Addy. If you haven't met Scott, he's awesome. Chris, I haven't worked with him before, but he's uh, leading the project. So definitely 
a unified kind of approach for authenticating on the SDKs library. Cool. Yeah. Let's go. .NET blogs. Uh, a ton of announcements yesterday. The first one is a new .NET MAUI Preview 5 support. So if you're doing mobile stuff with .NET MAUI, they've added support for Preview 5, which dropped at the same time as everything else was Preview 5. They have new UI components, new capabilities, and a single project template, which is important. And it does support uh, .NET Core tools, which is perfect. And MAUI is basically Xamarin Forms, right? Like a new version of that? Correct, Amendo. So, I can, so it's like cross-plat cross plat app UI. Mm -hmm. Does it use like, does it look the same on all of them or does it use like native controls on whatever thing you're on? You have options. You can use the default rendering. So if you put a button in your UI, it will render as a native button when it renders in Android and a native button okay. in iOS. But you can customize the look and feel to make it very explicit to look as you want consistently across multiple apps. I think Spotify does that, right? Or some other apps, they have their own kind of UI elements. And That's they, cool. they want to keep the consistency. So you can do both. That's cool. Yeah. And it's all C Sharp and .NET. So if you are a .NET developer, that means that you can now get started writing mobile apps if you haven't done this before super easily. Uh, and the team is... Does it work yeah, on well, desktop too? It has support for UWP. It doesn't have support for any other UI uh, components on desktop. Oh, no, no, there's a Mac OS uh, seam as well. So the only thing that we don't have support for is Linux, more or less. But there's a Mac OS, <clears throat> Xamarin Mac OS. Now, I don't know if Maui catches uh, Mac OS as well, but I know that out of the box they have WinUI, uh, so UWP, Xamarin, uh, iOS, and Android. It's cool. It is speaking cool. of speaking of Windows UI, mm -hmm. did you see? I guess you saw the Windows leak that went out. I know, and I tried to go and download it, but uh, I was either too late in the game because all the torrents had been taken down, or I <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh don't God, have the official ISO, and it, it's not <laughs> internal. Like you can't find it internally. It's what? insane. I was expecting it to be somewhere in the, in one of our um, in our advanced you know, um, early preview stuff, but it's not. I am so sick of the spam. Like, come on. I mean, I guess it's a good, but like... It's a good thing. We made it. Oh, damn, oh more. A... Oh, there's more now. Oh, this is annoying. Woo! These people suck. We're... We we made it big. Yeah. I don't say it as spam. I say it as a, as a recognition. <laughs> nah, it's... it's... I, Twitch is like... Report. It's like, okay, well, then you have to, like, go through an eight-step wizard. Well, that's dumb. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's spam. It's clearly spam. Move on. Yes. I, I agree. You know, I come know. on. <sighs> anyway. But so I want yeah, the Windows 11 thing. So, um... <clears throat> you got it? You got it, right? I did. And I was a little hesitant because, of course, you know, there's nothing like well, working... There's nothing like working in a security organization and downloading <laughs> random ISOs from the internet. <clears throat> I I, admire, I mean, I, if I were going to do it, which I tried to do it, and then it didn't, didn't work, it was going to be on an isolated, non-domain joined uh, yeah. laptop that I was going to play with. Yeah, I was like, I probably mean. don't want to put my corp creds into this one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is pretty cool. I have to say, I am a, I am a fan of the center of the center taskbar thing. You are? This, yeah, I think it's nice. Okay. Um, and the curvy windows are pretty nice, too, which is going to... It'll be a bit of a departure after literally everything has had a hard corner for 10 years corner. or 8 years or yes. however long it's been. But I, I remember looking cool. at a Mac, Mac OS back in, say, 2008, 2009, where they were very rounded. You yeah. Remember, everything was rounded back then? And yeah. I was a little bit envious that well, we had Windows 7 back then, which was eh, <laughs> eh. <laughs> yeah. But now, I don't know, there's, there's like this kind of a blend between Mac OS and Windows on both sides. Like, Mac OS is adopting things. And, yeah, I mean, it's not a surprise that JP jumped in right away, right? He probably licked it. He was the one who licked it. <laughs> no, no, I have to say, like, I don't, I don't have access to... I don't have access to ISOs that are that early, so it wasn't me. Um, I can tell you who had early access, though. Who? Our, uh, our manager's manager. Had a special device with uh, the operating system running for a while. It's like, how did you manage to do that? 
You know, there was another guy in our org who was tinted for, I think it was the 10X device, like the big uh, foldy one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Or maybe maybe the phone. I don't remember, but um, it was I don't know. Phone back in March 2020 when I joined the team. He had it yeah. sitting there. The oh, office. it was the phone? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was the phone. Surface yeah. phone. There's going to be a Surface 2, right? I heard there's a Surface, Surface Duo 2, like what, like this summer or something they're talking about it? I don't know. Well, the 24th is the event, so next week, tune in, uh, it's next Thursday, right? 17th, uh, Wednesday? 20, the 24th, 24th. Which is next, sorry. Is that Wednesday. Next, next Wednesday. Yeah, that'll yes. be cool. I hope that yeah. there, are, I hope we get the ISOs then, like an actual ISO I can put my corp creds into and not feel like I'm going to be yes. fired the next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't even remember your password. Remember, it's like a 93 character long thingy. Here's well, the thing. Um, of, here's the advantage. So the so I've noticed newer sign-in windows now, especially if you're signing into a new device, they mm -hmm. have an option for sign-in from another device. So like I have this ThinkSmart thing I use for Teams calls. It's like a little. It's like basically an Android tablet bolted uh -huh. to a speakerphone. Uh -huh. And when you sign into that, instead of doing instead of having to type a password on it, um, yeah. you click a link. And you, you do basically device code. So you sign in on your PC, type in a you know like an eight digit code, and then it signs you in. So I didn't have to know my password or anything. And when I bought a new phone, same thing. You sign in from another device, tap tap tap, done. No like having to remember it. It was awesome. I loved it. So that's uh, like that's the that's the future, right? Like uh, Mark Krasinovich said, six months. <clears throat> it's like having transport in the future where you don't have to remember passwords, just video oh, keys. Yeah. Fido keys or Fido, Fido keys and all the jazz. Fido, but I don't, I don't, Fido. Use I, I don't remember passwords. Although Fido, Fido. You know when photo, when I try to phone. sign in, I get a notification for a number to approve. You know the the weird. Yeah, hey, yeah, is, yeah. That, is this the right number? Yeah, but yeah. my phone doesn't doesn't work until I actually enter my password and then it prompts me for two FA. So I think I've said something wrong. So you got to set up the. Uh... In the Authenticator app, there's mm -hmm. a place to set up. Um, there's a place to set up phone sign-in. Okay. And I, I find it very confusing because if you go to like my signins.microsoft.com or my account.microsoft.com, where you can go set up MFA, <laughs> you can go to like aka.ms forward slash MFA setup. Um, yep. When you go there, when you do it, it it's like it it shows Authenticator. And then it also mm -hmm. shows authenticator, <laughs> but one one of them is non -phone, like non number passwordless sign in, and the other one right. is the passwordless sign in. So it's almost like two separate registrations, and it made it really confusing. Um, uh huh. And earlier, I could only be signed into one at a time too. It would only let me do one at a right. time. Right. So like it would say, oh, you're already you're you're you've got MFA on too many devices. That restriction seems to have been lifted though. So that's nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll so, have to so ask, when I try uh, to sign in, it says you need to put your password because it's oh, weird. Yeah. Anyway. And we then it says ask, send notification. Uh, but if it sends the notification, it just doesn't do anything. Next, okay. We'll have to ask Stefan and Daniel to dig into yes. MFA yes. on their show on Wednesday. That, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. So we covered everything. We got our Windows 11 announcement. There's a new .NET 6. Preview 5 announced with uh, new capabilities, better support for containers, uh, and con new container images, uh, Linux packages. I think there is uh, more OSINT analyzer, so they added more support for more advanced capabilities. That could be for you, enabling custom guards for platform compatibility, which is nice. Nice. Uh, That's cool. You can set the Windows form default font. Cool. Do something super obscure. Oh, talking about fonts. Damn it, I didn't have enough time to set it up. But there's a new Comic Sans for developers, and it looks super awesome. Have you seen it? Uh, I saw somebody somebody posted on Twitter, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. Yes, it's pretty good. So that extensions, there's a ton of stuff here. Oh, they've got to create async scope finally for, uh, for dependency ejection. Nice. Nice. Improvement so, for Jason so Serializer Bolt, and all that does. Go and read it. Bolt says, uh, I don't mind meetings overrunning, but by 45 minutes on a Friday afternoon? What happened, Bolt? How did that happen? <laughs> that sounds awful. 
I hope he's not referring to us because we're only 29 minutes late into coding stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bolt, what happened? I mean, yeah, what happened, Bolt? Hit us up. With you. Tell us what's going Who's on. Who's messing with you? Yeah, who hurt you? We'll get them. We won't. We'll, se we'll, we'll send we'll some try. friends, you know? That's we'll right. send them around. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um... Anyway, so so Christos, uh, well, you you told me that you were going to do some cool Python stuff today, yeah? Well, I will do Python. I don't know if it's going to be cool, but that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I happen uh, to have a I have a video for this. So hang on a sec. You do. All right. <laughs> So, okay, so hit us up, tell me, tell me what you're, tell me what we're doing, because I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Well, on this one, uh, what they mistake, next item, what? I am trying to create, right, so uh, two things. I was playing around with Python the other day, and I thought, you know what, how, uh, how easy would it be to uh, authenticate Python apps to our Azure AD? And I haven't done Python before, so it was it was a journey of learning Python and uh, working with MSL at the same time. So I said, well, first I'll use the I'll use one of the samples, and it was like, okay, okay. So I want to write my own one. So I I played around, and I, and I came to realize that it's not too hard. I mean, Python is not too far away from C sharp. That you know, it's very Foreign site, it's not like Go, right? And uh, I was able to put together a desktop app, a, a console app that calls an API, and that API um, is going to be running in .NET. So therefore, it will be super straightforward to call an API securely. You go authenticate on on Azure AD, grab it, an access token, and send it to the API, and then the API can return some data back. So I can use that as a, as a starting point. And then I was working with Michael Candy. In fact, you'll be seeing Michael Candy over the next couple of days because Michael, if you don't know Michael, he's he's a very uh, very well established in the Python community. He's done a ton of courses and he's helping the community grow and get bigger. He's got a fantastic podcast called Talk Python. And uh, there's a big push these days for, I think Flask was the uh, earlier version of creating APIs, but it was big and unwieldy and not fun. So Python now has a new framework called Fast API, which allows you to create node-like APIs or uh, .NET minimal APIs. If you saw the blog post I put together maybe two weeks ago, like very few lines of code to set up an API. So I was working with Michael Candy and I thought uh, I want to be able to secure that API as well. So uh, over the next couple of weeks, you'll see Michael coming to the show to, to secure Fast APIs with Azure AD. So I want to make sure that I have everything end-to-end -end because right now, for this example, at least we'll use a .NET API to uh, call from our console app. But um, it, it's been a great learning experience playing around. And today we're going to show you how to create these things and have fun. Yeah, JP is hard at work there, uh, putting all the nice links. <laughs> Can't type Python to say. Well, I, I mean, so one thing I guess while we're while mm -hmm. we're sitting here, I might as well mention. It. So um, yeah. <clears throat> I guess. You may have noticed there's a bit of a, a little bit of a branding, a little bit of a branding change, uh, a little bit different fonts, a little bit of a different yes. thing. Yeah. Um, so you know we're trying to trying to stay fresh and hip with the kids and <laughs> stay on top of what everybody's doing. So I think uh -huh. you know I think there's I I definitely am optimistic that uh you know I think I personally like uh, personally I like I like how it all looks, but you know other people may not necessarily agree. Uh, but I like it, so I'm going to continue to use it. Stop it, Bolt. It is not Comic Sans. What font are you using that's way too small, Christos? <clears throat> it's way too small? I'll make it bigger. Yeah, it's pretty make small. Make it big. Your whole window's small, actually. So there we go. How about now? Yeah? Yeah, that looks good. What font is that? It looks good. It looks nice and clean, nice and crisp. This one is, I can't remember. Um, go settings. Let's find out. Uh, oh, this one doesn't start appearance. Is appearance interaction? No, color schemes, rendering, 
Where do you? Uh... I think you got to click one of the one of them individually. Oh, okay. Problem. Appearance. Oh, Fira code. Oh, cool. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. Wait, nice and, I nice and clean and crisp. One. Fira <clears throat> code. Yes. Fira code NF. So we've refreshed branding to use DIN, which if you're familiar with PowerPoint or uh, Power BI, uh-huh. <laughs> so it's the default font for Power BI objects. But um, it actually is kind of close to some of the new fonts that are coming in Office that are available if you're an Office subscriber. Cascadia um, Code, right? Or like the Garo, what's it called? Uh, Grand View and some of the other, like the new default font yes. that's going to replace replace Calibri. And, it um, is. After what, 10 years? Was it Windows 7 that introduced Calibri? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely been at least Windows 7. It's old. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Like, I think it's cool to have, uh, I think it's cool to have, um, have some new fonts. And so I made some bunch of changes yesterday to make kind of make our, update our look a little just a little just freshen it up just a little bit you know um so yeah i kind of want now i kind of want a din mono spaced because i like it so much <laughs> so. the mon mono space is good ding yeah. mono space you said din d-i-n yeah i don't know anyway sorry so let's uh no, let's, man, let's, fine. So let's so let's dig in so what are you building we got some of our friends here avogadro is here uh, hey, you're avogadro. Not late. we're just starting to code bolt is here uh, bsd guy thank you for all your support always and on the Microsoft developer we have uh time bender 360 asking what's the best way to use ms graph to find when you email arrives in the mailbox Ooh. uh do we have yeah is that is do we have a subscription for the mailbox we do is that support it yeah, graph. Yeah, so we've got subscriptions from. It's on the user object on messages mm -hmm. on the messages uh, entity. In uh -huh. fact, uh, we may even be getting get into a little bit of graph subscriptions later today if we have time. So uh, okay, yeah. I'll move fast. I'll move fast. No, 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 no. Just if we have time, because I have a, I'm pretty ill about something, and uh, I have to complain about it because it wouldn't be a show without a complaint. So I have to complain. Obviously. And, and then we're gonna fix it though. That's the best part. You complain and then you fix it. Yes, you complain and you fix it. Don't complain yes. without fixing it. There are a lot of people out there that will just do that. They will go on the Twitter sphere and web and write blogs and do stuff, and then they don't provide a solution, which is useless. Please, if you're going to complain about something, show us the workaround. Okay, so okay. before we get started, I'm going to uh, add a new API there. Uh, so we'll just do, in fact, let's not add auth yet. So we can call it from our app without having to add auth, and then we'll add the auth later. So I have a directory that doesn't have anything right now. So we're just going to create a new ASP.NET 5 API. And if we do LS, you'll see there's an API. At the root, I'm going to create a new, a couple of new files. One of them will be, uh, and in fact, let's open it in VS Code. Do I have code open yet on this one? I do have code open. And let me make this bigger so everybody can see. Whoa, too big. Ah, uh, yes, restore for now. It's going to add VS Code. So here I'm going to crea create a requirements.txt. And this is what uh, Python kids use these days to add their dependencies. This is where you, it's like a project.json or what's the package.json for node. And it's like project.json, oh, what do we have for .NET? I can't remember. I keep on forgetting. Wait a minute. It's the upset. No, it's the uh, what you get here. The adding package dependencies. So let's go back to our requirements. And we'll need two libraries because first we need to authenticate. And then secondly, we want to call into an API. And to do that, uh, there are two libraries in Python. Python, I think there is a uh, called MSO, obviously. No, I don't want... What? The Python MSL certificate? Where did that come from? What? So you can install it using a, a PIP or pipe, or you can uh, just add it to the requirements, and we'll do just that, add it to the requirements. And then I'll show you how to install this stuff. See, I, I think I'm learning. I'm learning. Learning. So bear with me while we're learning together. So MSL equals 
like you can do greater equals and that will give you the minimal uh, dependency. That's the latest one for MSOL. And then there is uh, there, are, there are a few libraries that you can use. Don't forget to use virtual environment. We will do that, my friend. Phil Snubble, thanks for uh, coming in. We'll do that in a second. Uh, it's very weird. Like when you work with Python, you have to, or it's recommended that you create, uh, what's the font that everyone loves because it's nice for dyslexia? It's not uh, Comic Sans. Yeah, Comic Sans is definitely one of them. That was its big, that was its big sort of uh, selling point. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So with that, we have everything we need in our um, Python project to first authenticate to MSA or Azure AD, and then secondly to actually go and do HTTP calls. So now with that, uh, let's go and open our console. Let's see if I remember the steps. So first thing is pi dash m d e n v and then dot v e n v. Well, well, v e n v in the first one. It's v. Oh, yes, okay. thank you. That seems to be more promising now. Just thinking about it, spinning things up, and then. Pipe install. Oh no, I need to do the. I need to activate that. So that will be. Let me remember. How do I activate? I forgot about that already. Activate. What happened? It's fine. I'm just trying to remember how to activate the V in V environment. Uh, there's a command that you need to run. It's V and V uh, bin, uh, scripts activate. There you go. That's fine. Cool. So not only do you need to create it, but you also need to activate. So V, E, and V. And then it's... Uh, same. It's scripts activate. That should have done the job. And then we have PIP install dash R requirements dot txt. What is wrong with my fingers today? There you go. So it's downloading everything. By the way, the first time that you run it, it might take a while. Thank you, Phil Snubble, for uh, having my back. Yes, it is. Uh, it's weird because if you're running it on a Mac, you need to provide a dot or a source before the command and there's a different thing. Uh, one of the things that we need to do is also call this command to not have to worry about it. Apparently this is a standard thing for all the stuff. We need to just update PIP and installing the latest one. So now we can go back into our VS codes and uh, let's write some Python. And then once we add our first Python file, it will actually uh, prompt us to select a compiler. We'll name our file console.py. Activating extensions. Now by default, it will select the, the, the default Python um, runtime, but we don't want that one. We want, uh, Hate it. You need to find the, the right one. So let's go into our paths. Like let's go uh, open folder, reveal and file explorer, which is good. And then let me show you what I'm doing so people can see. I need to go in here, you need to go into scripts, I think, and then you need to select Python. Where's copy path? Copy as path. There you go. And then here, you need to add this, press enter, yes, oh, it's, nope, that's the wrong place, projects. Do you, yeah, you want the, because you want the interpreter from your virtual environment, right? Exactly, yep. Yeah, yeah. And now down here, you'll see it says V, E, and V environment. 
that means that we are in the right place. This nice. is now using the right one. Otherwise, if you try to run things, using type hints or no. Python 2, I hope Python 3 is a lie. <laughs> Python 3 is a lie. No, Python 3 is where things are these days. So uh, that's how we do it. Right, JP? Now we need to import the libraries that we're using. So first we need to import requests. And then we also have to import import msal. So the two libraries that we need to import. It's weird because I'm always trying to put semicolons in the end and Python doesn't have semicolons. So uh, it's, it's fun times. Uh, we could hard code the Azure AD settings here, but we don't want to do that. We want to follow best practices. So let's stick them into a JSON file. So we'll do settings. No, where'd it go? Oh, okay. Settings.json. No, what the? How did that happen? I want to say Python here. Oh, settings.json. And then in here, we want to have a client ID, I guess, since we're working with Azure, right? Client ID something. And we want a tenant ID, something. And I don't think we need anything else in our config.json. Do we need a secret? I don't think we need a secret, do we? How are we going to, is the user going to sign in? Or yes. We so we're not doing a, uh, a the last time I was playing around with that. Oh, no, I used a confidential client the last time. So we need a secret for it. So we're, yeah, we're going to be running as the app. We can use a public client or we can use a confidential client. So let's do. Right. And then probably the scope for our API, which we'll need in a minute. But for now, let's not worry about that. But let's put it there. Ideally, we should be logging in as ourselves, right? I guess it depends on what the app is supposed to do, right? True. True. Python, MSL. So if you're doing something like, you know, some sort of like long running processing type of a task, mm -hmm. or if you need to access like all the data or something, then yeah, that would, you know, uh, <clears throat> client credentials grant makes a lot of sense. If you need to yep. access a specific user's data, um, or you know you, you're only allowed to operate on a user's data, then you'd want you know you'd want a user to sign in. That's a true. That's a true thing. So let's get the confidential thing running first, and then we can uh, we can go and fix it. Let's sign into Azure AD. Azure no portal. I think the, uh, the monitor being put so high up, it looks like I'm looking at the sky now, which it is does. weird. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of funny. I noticed that the other day, I was like, what is he looking at? <laughs> what is he? I'm looking at the motor, which is up there. Uh, my hope was I'll be looking at the camera, but I think the placement is a little bit weird. We've got to get um, you one of those things they have, like the news people have. It's like... A teleprompter? Well, not, a but like a teleprompter that will show your screen contents instead of words. Uh huh. I don't yes. think it'd be that hard, right? You just need something that's like reflective, right? 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 Well, there are there are a lot of people in the uh, at Microsoft that have built their own um, they build their own one a teleprompter using something like a, I don't know. Yeah, it'd be kind Was of it? cool. Yeah, but at the same time, I want to have something that I can code against, right? I don't want to have something that tells me what to say. We're not newscasters or news anchorman. Anchorman. There you go. Python. <laughs> Could you imagine? The desk. We'll, we'll just do accounts in this organization. We'll register this. And I don't think there needs to be a direct URI anyway, because it's a confidential client. And we'll just grab this because we need it. Our, our client ID. Then we'll grab our tenant ID. And then we'll have to come back as well to configure. 
the uh, API at some point. So client secrets. Let's dox ourselves. Authentication. Certificates. Secrets. New secret. I'll make it valid for a day. Ha! <laughs> ah. <clears throat> and then I'll be wondering why the app is not working anymore. I like how it says it expires. Let's go and fix it. How's your uh, secret rotation thingy going, JP? Um, a lot of updates, which we'll cover. <laughs> we'll cover sometime, oh. sometime soon. In another another couple shows, we'll we'll get back into it. It's uh, uh huh. It's, it's coming along. I've um, I've tried to. I, I I ended up doing a bunch of stuff with like NuGet and external packages and stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. that was an experience. <laughs> Like I don't, know, I don't know the best way to describe it, but um, that workflow feels it. The workflow either feels like I'm broken, like I don't know uh -huh. what I'm doing, or that the workflow okay. is broken. Because if I'm like in dev mode, I want to use submodules, uh, like get submodules and reference projects, and that that is seemingly difficult with submodules uh and especially with multi-targeted assemblies and i had a lot of trouble with it so i have some ideas of how to fix it i just haven't been able to circle back around and uh circle back around and figure it out so but yeah we'll come, back, we'll come back to it in a couple of weeks i my hope is that by making it a package it'll be really easy to integrate into other stuff like asman if we wanted to go down that route because people have asked for asman support right yes so i thought this would be a good <clears throat> This should be a good one. <laughs> I love your snubbles comment. This is the 45 stream, the misanthropic stream. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, ba Balfour what better, says, yeah. what better way to you know have contempt for humanity by sitting in front of humanity for five hours every week and showing it, showing them our secrets. That's right. And having faith in humanity, right? Bolt so says. Bolt says it, it could be worse. My client has branding guidelines that specify where you can put cameras when having a talking headshot. Wow. Wow. Imagine, imagine writing those guidelines, much less having to be subject to them. That's insanity. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do now is to read those settings. So first things first, we need to uh, use open, which is a built-in uh, function inside uh, Python part of the BCL, base class library. Do they have a BCL in Python? <clears throat> well, Python, from what I understand, because uh, Bolt said, imagine how bored I was to read all of those guidelines. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Python has an interest, from, as, as I've understood it, because the last time I did like real Python was in college. And um, you know, very much like a you know, batteries included kind of a thing. I don't want to download okay. 9,000 packages. I want, you know, a package that does what I need it to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's you know, pretty different from other, from other languages in that regard, you know, that you don't need 8 bazillion packages to get work done, but rather you get this one sort of larger, almost like a meta package that's got a bunch of other stuff in it, so. Nice. Up. Uh Equals. So now, we're, in fact, you know what? I I want to uh, run this and see where we are. All right. Yeah, you know what? Uh, oh, in fact, you know, you can run it from inside VS Code. Did you know that? Check this out. Love it. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, so in, in fact, it calls what it needs to call. But you can do uh, pi, console pi, and then we'll run it. So it's the same thing. But you can run it from here. You can also set up a... I launch settings to Jason to run it for you, but I'm just saying it's fun, right? Let's close this one. So it's working. At least at this point, it's working. Uh, let's go and create our MSL app. Uh, MSL. In fact, let's go and call the API without uh, without authenticating first. So let's let's make sure that it works. So the API is here. Uh, we don't have anything magic here. There's no authentication happening right now. So you see there's no auth. And we have a controller called weather forecast, which we should be able to call from our uh, console app. So let's try to do that one step at a time. So for that, we're going to use a session equals requests 
dot sessions or sessions is it dot create if I remember correctly. And new or is it session? Oh, it's a session. Session, yes. And with this session, you can also add uh, auth headers and stuff like that if you need to. So this is where we will be working with the the authentication component. But now we can just say response equals session dot get, and then pass the URI. We should be HTTP in that HTTPS localhost 5001. I think it's weather forecast, isn't it? Weather forecast. And then close this. And then we can do print response. <clears throat> and we print response. Not just the response, but the contents of the response. Did I mistype something? Why are you complaining? Must be separated know. by new line. Oh, it doesn't think there's a new line. Did it just like? I think it's oh, just the. Uh, I think it's just the. Uh, just like the linter, maybe. Yeah. IntelliSense. Sometimes the IntelliSense on VS Code just gets messed up. Must be separated by new line. So did I forget to close the bracket or something? Uh, it That's might good. be it, Avogadro saying it could be. It's actually API weather forecast. No, it is weather forecast because if you look at the controller here, there's no API in the front. The root is just a controller, so it should just be that. Oh, is that not configured in the uh, in the host somewhere? But it, it, well, get, we'll find out soon enough. But we'll find out um, very soon. Exactly. So let's run it. Albio five is saying it's print. Uh, print is a method. Oh. Yes, sorry, you're absolutely right. Damn. <laughs> it is a method. Thank you, sir. I love it. Look at that. Everybody's participating. Uh, .NET build. Actually, .NET run. Why not? Fresh out of the box. Should work. So we're spinning up our API, and then we'll call it from our uh, console app, and we should get some data printed on the <laughs> console. Fuel says uh, authenticating just makes APIs harder to use anyway. Who Ooh. needs it? <laughs> the say port Max tries to say what the SSL certificate failed. Oh, you so your local your local dev certs must not be trusted. Oh, interesting. Why? I mean, uh, well, go just go to local host five, go to local host five thousand one in your browser and see if it hits. See if you get a. Uh, it See if does. you get a cert error. Well, it says that page can be found. And then let's say weather forecast. We can't see it, well, by the way. Sorry, man. There you go. It's working. And that's... Uh, and that, uh, does Python have a separate... Um, Certificates? Does Python have a separate cert store? I would have thought it would have worked on Windows, but let's see. Maybe I screwed up the URL here. Let's uh, run it again. Ha! Huh. Why? That's Wait, interesting. Just do uh, just do oh. uh, five thousand for now. Just do HTTP for now, right? Should be yeah. Fine. Although it does redirect, doesn't it? Hmm. I think it redirects to five thousand one, doesn't it? Uh, if you've got force HTTPS on in the API, it will. But yeah, I think that's the case. Although, unable to get local issuer certificate. That's interesting because I haven't had this issue before. Oh, you know what? I had this issue before. Ah, okay, so let's stop this one. And then let's change it to not force a... Oh, that sucks. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, we should fix it for sure. So in here, there's a, a redirect a HSTS redirection so let's comment this out for now <laughs> less secure and then we'll add security don't run that's that's weird by the way yeah it's kind of it's definitely weird but I, my suspicion is i wonder if there's okay, something okay so at least you're getting your data now right yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying? I wonder if, well, it's either not looking or not using the Windows search store. That's one option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't know enough about Python to say if it is or if it is not. Or um, it, it does some magic special stuff with localhost, which I can't imagine that would do. It looks like there's a package called Certify, C-E-R-T-I-F-I. -I, uh -huh. And it looks like there may be an update there. So I'm not sure, but certify. Um, do you have the version number? Well, uh, I would don't go down that route yet. I'll I will look while you're continuing. While well, you're working now, while we're working, so we have our uh, configuration for uh, our uh, app. So let's go and add the app there. The let's configure our MSAL in our code to authenticate, and then we'll add it to our uh, outgoing call uh, app dot no app equals msal dot confidential client application and then here it says client credential authority and um and then you need to also pass the client id i guess http client none okay uh, client id is the first one so let's do client id go away client id equals msal Config.client ID. Keep it consistent. Yeah, it sounds, it, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like we, we need to upgrade as what is essentially the store, the intermediate store, um, or the cert store that Pit or that Python will use in your VNV. Okay. Um, which uh, is pip3 install upgrade or dash dash upgrade certify. It? Yeah, so see if you can do that in your in your virtual environment uh, once you yep. get ready. Um, and I'll just uh, you know what I'll just put the command in the chat since you're since so that you needs to be run inside PIP, right? Uh, it needs to be run inside your virtual environment. Uh huh. Okay. And then authority is just authority. And the authority is the, uh, we need to go and change that, I think, because we have tenant ID. Uh, yeah, you know what? I mean, we shouldn't be doing that technically, but F. Should be doing what? Uh, well, it's a HTTPS, um, Microsoft, is it login on my, login MicrosoftOnline.com? Yep. MicrosoftOnline.com. That and then here you just add the msl config and then tenant ID. And this gives us a single tenant app essentially. Yes. Yeah. So this will only uh, work against your against your uh, Azure AD tenant. Correct, Tamendo. I mean, we could use common here, right? But, yeah. Uh, so that's it. And now we can do an app Oops, acquire token, uh, which one is it? For clients. And then use the scopes. And we have the scopes. Uh, it should be in msal underscore config. And then here, uh, no. Oh yeah, the it's scopes. I think you just called it scopes, yeah. Yeah, I, think I even I even did worse than that. <laughs> it's a scope. It's not even an array. What does it expect? Uh, this I believe expects, it. Uh, believe it expects an array. Expects an array. Interesting. Okay. Let's see how much we're gonna fail on this one. Okay. Uh, let's go into the scope, which we don't have a scope yet. That's true. I guess we don't have a scope yet, do we? Don't have a scope, so let's go and add the scopes. Back into Azure AD now, friends, just to add an API so we can uh, we can call it. Probably so here. Zoom, zoom that in a little bit. Happy. These should go away once you accept them, please. <laughs> How many times do I have to do that? All right, new registration. So it'll be Python stream API. Register. Don't need to put anything else here other than 
expose an API, set the URI. You can change that to be a funky, nice name if you want to. Uh, the scope will be uh, user dot read. Now. We're not gonna have we're not gonna have users in here, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So uh, how should it app dot read weather? Well, we gotta do a uh, we gotta do a role for apps. Ah, oh, yes, we do. You're right. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there's this is like a quirk of, of Azure AD. In fact, there was some confusion about this on Twitter yesterday. <laughs> so oh yes. So we have the scopes for delegated permissions, essentially, mm -hmm. for you for when you know things you want to request from a user, like yep. I want to read your mailbox, I want to read your weather, etc. But for applications, we use roles, um, yes. which is a little counterintuitive because <laughs> a user can also be in a role, and it's a wholly distinct thing from a scope. Uh, but for application permissions, uh, they're defined via roles, not via Correct. scopes. So. So we have a data dot read scope, which is here. Sorry, it's not a scope; it's an app role. Sorry, I forgot about that. So that is there, and we have the API. So uh, let's grab the information from here. Now go back to our API and let's set it up. Hey, let's go API. First, we need to add some Azure AD magic here, Azure. And then I will say, I don't remember what we need to put here, but I think it's a uh, tenant ID. Client ID. I think there might be one more thing that we need to put there, but for now, let's keep that. And I have the client ID here already. And let's go and grab the tenant ID. We'll need the uh, authority too. Okay. I think maybe, I think the API. settings, I think the settings in .NET are called, I think in .NET settings, it's called instance. And it's just login.microsoftonline.com, ACDPS login.microsoftonline.com. <clears throat> And to continue my string of being pedantic here, I think the D in Azure AD has to be lowercase. I love for the your pedantry. For the I default, love your pedantry. For the Bring default to, I just mean for the default to pick up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, is it? I can't. Uh, Login to MicrosoftOnline.com. It's Microsoft Online, not on Microsoft. Do we need to put the, we don't need that there, right? We don't need the. I don't think so. I think it also needs the domain. Well, I think since you have the tenant ID, ID. Yeah. I think it will concoct the URL for you, but I don't remember. Let's play safe. Okay. I don't think we need a client secret, right? Because we're nope. not. No, we're not yeah. acquiring it. Looking for downstream APIs, so that should be enough. Then let's go add the package into our project, which should be here. You know what? Let's do .NET CD API .NET add package Microsoft .identity .web. Microsoft mistyped. Oh, I got the command the first time. Check this out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I use like .net new, .net oh, yeah. add. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So but that's I know that the there. We have that. Then go into our startup. Then in here. That's the beauty. I love it. This one. Like, so little code. Configure services. And then here, I want to say services dot add Microsoft web, a Microsoft Identity Web API authentication, I think. Microsoft Web, Microsoft Identity Web API authentication. Is that the right one? I think yes. that's it. 
God. And then because we have the default stuff, it's just configuration there because we're using just the default Azure AD. Then down here, we need to say we want to use authentication. Do we have to do authentication here? Because we've already got we authorization. Do I don't. I don't think we have to do authentication here. Because we don't say we have, but because let's uh, let's ignore it. Okay. Well, because we're, because not, we're not getting a token. Well, be, well, we're not getting a token, and we're not asking the user to authenticate. Like we don't care if the user authenticates. All we care about is that we get a token that matches what we expect. So I don't True. think we have to. I'll be curious to see how it works. Without yes. It. Let's see. <laughs> So authorize, we need that here. And then do you want to authorize to a specific role? Yes. What was the role so, that we created? Uh, I can't remember. Was it, was, <laughs> I can't was remember. It, was it data.read, I think? Yeah, it was data.read. Let's go yeah. to the API. Uh, it's roles. It's uh, data.read, you're right. So here will be authorized for roles, right? Um, I don't even think we have to do that. Uh, well, you can do it on the whole controller, or you can do it here. It's just authorize and then roles. Roles equals policy. Oh, roles. Yeah. Yeah, you can do policies too. Like, if you're, and that's one thing too. Like, if you're using different, say you want, say you have user scopes and mm -hmm. app roles. Yep. The app roles come in in the roles token or the roles claim, yes. whereas the scopes come in in the scopes or SDP claim. And if you wanted to authorize, say, the same method to either an app role or a scope, we could do an authorization uh -huh. policy that checks both of those claims, you know, for uh, either can I or. Can I cheat? Can I cheat and do it? Well, you just do it. You just put the role in here because there's only one role, right? True. But if you were counting from a front-facing user authenticated app, right? I mean... You know what? I'll put in the blog post so we don't have to do it here. But for here, we have just data to read, right? There you go. And I think, I think it's a somewhat of a niche case in the sense that the kind of APIs you call as a user are somewhat mm -hmm. different than the APIs you would call as an application, because and, and not True. in all cases, because there's certainly plenty of cases where you would have the same. Microsoft Graph mm -hmm. has a lot of the same. Um, but I don't know if I'd consider Graph a typical API either, right? Because it's so massive in terms of the services that it covers. True. Um, so I wonder how frequently the exact same method would be called from both a user context and from an application context. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. So here. And Bolt mentions, too, that in the add authorization call in startup, you can set the policy in there. You can do the policy builder there, too. Yes, that's 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 how I had in the past. And in fact, in the blog post, I will show you how to do both scopes and app roles. So you see here, uh, we've got token, so we can do a print f and see the token as it comes in. But I'm not going to add it for now. I just want to make the call. No, it's not print f. Where's print f for? From is it C C C C plus plus? Okay, I guess right. it's, pr it's print format, right? If you wanted to have like a format. All format at the same time. Yeah. But it's not, it seems that F. Maybe Ooh. not. Print F is not defined. Maybe that's an I old one, I don't know. Maybe Python too? Maybe. Guide us, oh wise friends. King. Okay. okay. Yeah, man, I'm good. Let's go down here. I'll make sure that I have this one up. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Fuel Snubble says, just disable it. <laughs> he said, if you had picked <laughs> Python 2, it would have worked. Thank you. Right, so now we're going to call... What? Settings.json is there. What are you talking about? No file or directory found. What? Are you in a different folder? You're in, that, you're in the API folder, aren't you? Oh, I am. You're right. Thank you. No, 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 I'm sorry. Your 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 console is in the API folder. Yes. So I need to... Interesting. So if you run it from there... Oh, there you go. Uh, error. The required fill scope is missing from the credential. Did we put a scope in your config? I think I forgot to do that. I think we did, didn't we? Oh, no, I didn't. Data. 
but read. Well, okay, so... So? That scope... Um, mm -hmm. That scope isn't going to work. Why? Because it's Oh, client... because we haven't set it up in the app yet. Well, so we haven't set it up. It's client credentials. And... It needs to be dot... Yes, you're right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're right. And it's not and graph. It's... And it's... Because, <laughs> well, graph is the only thing you can use the shorthand for. So, like... Right. Like, the fully qualified graph name is graph.microsoft.com yes, forward yes. slash user.read or, you know, whatever. But there's a shortcut for graph. So you can call graph without yep. putting in the full resource. But since we're calling your own API, we have to have that resource in there. Exactly. And mm -hmm. we got to admin consent because it's an app permission. Mm -hmm. So API permissions, add the permission, my APIs. This is so weird when it comes like that. Uh, Python stream API. There, add permission. Now we need to consent for that one. And then once that's consented, we need to click here, grab this, but change it to dot default, right? That's right. Thank you, Bolt. I'm going to the beach next next week. Is it next week I go to the beach? No. The oh, week after the week next, after I go that. to the beach, and so I will attempt. Don't freak to, me out like that. I will attempt to fix the problem that is these chicken legs, but I make no promises. <laughs> I love it. Let's run it. Luckily, everybody sees me from the you know from from mid torso up ninety five percent of the day. I just thought you know since we were all friends here, I could I don't, I don't know if you're gonna have legs, man. I don't <clears> even know if you have legs. That's true. Yeah. I could not, but you know, I thought we were friends here and. Uh, obviously, obviously, <laughs> you know. By the way, Hannah is hella tall. She's taller than me. Nice. Did you know that? I knew she was tall. I didn't know how tall. But how tall what? are you, though, for her to be taller than you? Uh, I'm 5'9". Did I not tell you the story, that the super embarrassing story that um, JWD does and this? But I went to the doctor for my physical, and then she said, how tall are you? I was like 5'11". And she goes, okay, let's measure you. And I was five nine. <laughs> Apparently, I I lost I lost two inches between the last year and this year. It's well, you insane. know why? It's because of gravity. You're always picking up all those heavy weights, and they're pushing you down. They're making you shorter. I I think I've got density, though. You know, it's all about density. That's true. <laughs> if there's anything that we are on this stream, the two of us, it's dense, one hundred percent. Density is definitely one of our uh, skills. It's one of right, our so... it's one of our defining traits. <laughs> yeah, as you saw before, let me just go back into here. You'll notice that the uh, issuer is HSTS, so that means that we're getting a V1 token. We want a V2 token. Apparently, uh, when you create an app registration using the graph, it creates, a by default, a V2 uh, version. But if you create it in the portal, it creates it as uh, with null right next to the, sorry, yes, the access token accepted version is null by default. Which is weird. I don't know why we're Which not defaulting to be two. Yeah, why null or one, right? Well, it defaults to null, which is the same one. as one. As one, yes. The thing is, you can get a token like regardless of the token version. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll get a token from it, the endpoint you get the token from. So either v one or v two doesn't matter in terms of the token version that you get because the token version is going to be defined by your your API what your API is going to parse and accept and so if your client is using v1 or v2 doesn't matter okay. because you'll always get an access token that matches the version in in your API's manifest because otherwise your API would have to accommodate both and that would be a huge pain well for the fast API stuff I had to do that because there's no library to do it out of the box, so I wrote my own thingy, which is fun. It was fun. It was fun learning about that aspect. So now we said the right. There you go. What? Oh, did I not save everything? Save everything. Did I copy the wrong thing? I thought I got a new token. Or did I not run it? Still clear. Let's run it again. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Seems the same to me. 
It may oh, take no. a it may take a minute for that uh for that change to properly. Really? Wow. Did you did you save the manifest? Is it set to two? Well, let's double check to make sure that I did that. Huh. Ta da. Oh, because it looked like there was an error. The last oh, there was time, an error? I think. I think last oh, time was it? like an like an error an extra oh, yeah. thing. Somewhere. I changed the accept map claims to uh rather than this oh, by mistake. Yeah. So oh god, I closed I closed the portal. Damn it. It's okay. It's okay. Back to that. So now, now we should get the correct access token version that your API is going yes, to Yes, and that looks right? very different. So that should be it. There. It's uh, sad that I recognize this uh, first part over here. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go. Right token and the right roles. So technically now, if we were to call our API, that should work, right? Yeah, it should be good. Okay, let's do this. So here, before we do that, we need to say session dot uh i think it's off if i remember correctly or it might yeah. be headers the headers yeah for the headers let me see whoa that got smaller is that okay now everybody can see it mm -hmm. happy okay cool mm -hmm. yeah looks good So I need to remember how to do the um, the auth header. It's headers. <laughs> Avogadro says to fix chicken legs, I have to do workouts with you. Problem is you're 3,000 miles away from me. I guess we have to do like. True. I guess should we do like a fitness show and see if we get better viewership? Then, well, you teaching me how to not be slovenly and gross and chicken legged. Apparently, I don't think uh, I am qualified to do that because I am fat, and I need to work on that one as well. Hmm. hmm. Well, I, I think know. we can. I think we. I can fly out to see you when in September. Is that what they told uh -huh. us? Oh so, yeah. So I've got. Oh, yeah. I've got what four months, three months before of uh, silent judgment before I can come out there and get judged in person. <laughs> I love it. Token. <laughs> uh, uh, I think that's token, isn't it? That should be it. That should be it. Is that all? Oh yeah. Yes. Well, is there not an access token property? Because look at your object in your console. It's got like token type expires. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, yeah. Blah. So it should be. It should be. Uh, maybe that should be named token, should be named something else. Token dot. Um, it looks like it's access, access token. underscore token, right? Yes. Oh, that's how you have to get it. Oh, that's weird. Yes. Well, because that's a result, I would change that to be result. You know what? Auth result. You can't, it like a, you can't do like a result dot access token? Apparently not. Oh, that's weird. I mean, we can try and see if that resolves the object. I What's mean, the worst it, that can happen, right? I mean, it's it's fine, but I'm just surprised. Yeah, I'm following the uh, the docs, so uh, okay. that's it. So now that should attach the auth header to our call. Okay. And then we should be able to. Interesting. What happened here? It just prints B. It doesn't throw the 403 error message. So we see it in the console, maybe. Maybe print response dot status or whatever too. Response, yeah, that's a good point. If that's somewhere in the uh... response, response dot, right? So I guess that status code. There, you go. there we go. Status code, cool. All right. Yeah. Well, you might not want to print your auth result anymore because that's going to take up our precious uh, yeah. screen real estate. That's a good point. All right. Well, we know that we get a token now with the right roles, so let's run it. All right, let's go. 401. Okay, that's good. Lovely. So it's better than nothing. Um, so why did we screw up? So I wonder, can we see the headers of the response? Mm, I guess so. Is oh, you know what? We can put somewhere? a. We'll not put a breakpoint. Will that? Nah. You need to have a launch.json to do that. 
true. And that is yeah, not so one, but odd configuration. Oh, that's for uh, your API. Yeah, but it's at the root, so it should probably be able to run everything. PowerShell, Node, Python. Python file, I guess. Program file. Is that it? Is that that should come mean? in from that should come in from the file you hit F five on. So let's see. Oh, is it? I think so. Okay. You may you might need to be explicit, I guess. But let's find out. I mean, you would run it from here, right? Yeah, like if you hit F five from here, what do you get? Oh, I guess it's gonna do the other one. Yeah, current file. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, did it run it? Oh, it did run. Oh, check this out. That's nice. great. Cool. Okay. So uh, connection special is elapsed. Raw. Would that raw give us anything? Request. Unauthorized. Do we have the response? Well, so usually we'll also, I mean, something's, something's just not right with our token, which is no big deal. But um, sometimes we'll get more data in the response headers. Yes. Okay. But so it that's, doesn't, that's not looking good. Headers. So. I found them there. Oh, good. Okay. Let's see what we got. So there'll be a 401, and there'll probably be a www authenticate in there. Yeah, there authenticate. Oh, so that's just telling us. And there's what no. We, is there any body content? Special variables, built immutable sequence. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think those are just the request, yes. like the things that make the request object. Oh, I, I lost it now. Where is it? Hide, hide, thing. Okay. And so request response for a one connection content is empty. Headers is permanent redirect false. None. So that's, that's okay. So let's go look at your uh, let's go look at API? your code. Yeah, it's your yeah. API code. So again, let's go into startup. Close. You know what? In your controller, in your well, let's go to your uh, go to your settings, your app settings okay. for your for your thing, mm -hmm. and humor me a moment. For the instance, do instance forward slash your domain name forward slash v two dot zero. You want on Microsoft.com, right? Yep. Is it V2.0? Yeah. Or just V2? V2.0. 2.0. Okay. And run that. Run your API again. Let's see. Okay. Because I, I don't know uh -huh. if, it goes in, if it goes and gets the V2 issuer by default without you explicitly telling it. And since our, since our version is 2. Oh, you know what? It could be the fact that we don't have Authenticate. In the app dot uh, add authentication. Yeah, but I sort of I don't see like this isn't authentication though. That's that's, that's what I don't. All our samples, but uh, you might be right. Still a four one. Let me mm. uh, let me uh, stop the console. <gasps> we got more from unable to obtain configuration. Oh, that's good. It means okay. that uh, our settings are broken and. Yeah. In the you know what I was missing in here in the app settings, you need a backslash there, which I didn't have before. Let's try that. Bear with us while we're troubleshooting. Well, I mean, every single point version of identity.web they change the config, change the, so the yeah. config names. It's like Jesus, mm -hmm. you know. Who can remember them? Just run a template because you know I just do new apps all the time. Go back to your if we... go back to your console. Wait, did you restart it after we made that config change? I did. Well, let's restart again just in case. Well, it didn't throw an error message this time, so it was definitely a different error message. On the run. Okay, it's running. Let's run the Python console. Done. Nope, still a four one. I'm okay. telling you, I think it's the author authenticate the app dot use authentication. Okay. Or it might not be. Maybe maybe it is. I just I I'm, I would be disappointed if that's the case. <laughs> well, again, it's a dentist. No many things make sense, right? 
Well, I mean, I guess... I don't know. I guess maybe it is... Maybe that, that is considered, like, authentication in that sense. I don't know. I, it feels to me like it's not, but maybe that... I, uh, maybe... We got it. Okay, so that's what it was. So it was my fault the whole time. No, no, no. It's not your fault because I would assume the same, right? But apparently, I think the authenticate does the... The token validation, and then mm -hmm. the authorization is only for checking roles. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think authorization is used out of the box until you add author authorize on your controller. Yeah. And the middleware will still activate if you say just up use authentication. So if you don't pass an access token, I guess it will fail. Yeah. It's weird. Okay. So it is working. We must get the data. Uh, and we have 30 minutes left, so do you want to, I mean, I will check this code in, there will be a blog post to follow this, and I will also add real weather data, so we'll be calling the weather, open weather API thingy, and I'll use some key vault stuff to secure the API keys, and um, there will be a blog post so you can follow up, and then in a couple of weeks we'll do fast APIs with Azure AD, and there will be a library to help you work with uh, Azure AD as well. So, I've wrapped up my stuff. And we might cool. get it working. Well, if you, you know, want, so, um, well, let's take a let's take a quick break, and I've got some complaints um, that <laughs> I can share with everybody. So complaints and code, you got yeah. right. Complaints no, and complaints. Yeah, I have complaints and code. So yeah, all right. So, so you're give fixing, us, you're fixing it. Okay, two minutes. So give us two minutes, and we'll be back. Okay, we're back. So, I don't know if back. I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, we have a nice, cool, new little upcoming events thing in the in the front uh, on the mm -hmm. waiting screens, etc. Right? And um, let me just tell you, there are some things about that that aren't necessarily correct. So, for example, I'm gonna get my screen up here, and we can take a look. So.
if we take a look here at what this looks like, you'll notice, oh, Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, we're going to do some screen. We're going to do some rotators. We're gonna, um, Next Monday, we're going to do Learn Live, blah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But as this flows through, you're going to see some other stuff that comes up. And mm -hmm. some of those times and dates are going to be a little bit off. <laughs> <laughs> and so not only do we have them here, right, where we have to deal with them here, mm -hmm. but we also have them on our website, which we haven't formally launched, but uh, I guess we can show it to you anyway. So mm -hmm. 40, 45show.dev will sort of be our home uh, here in the future. And so you'll notice we have these upcoming activities, which is cool too, right? Um, so that if you, you know, you want to stay up with the show and figure out what we're working on next. And since we're going to have, you know, we've got more activities that are going to be coming up in this year that aren't just the stream, we thought it'd be great to have a calendar. So this calendar comes off of an ICS file. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with ICS as a format, but ICS is, uh, is pretty common. There's some other things about ICS. Uh, most notably that I'm fairly certain... It hasn't been updated in a, as a format since the 70s. This is too small, by the way. Nobody can see it. I know, I know. I'm getting there. So if we look at an ICS file, it's like mm -hmm. it looks like some something straight out of like X12 EDI days. I, th like, I think it's a it's a 1980s 1990s format. Yeah, like um, it it's straight from it, it's like something BizTalk would deal with. You know what I mean? Maybe so, BizTalk is dealing with them. <laughs> when was the ICS format created? Yes. Oh, 1998, which is even more disappointing uh, that it came out in 1998. I told you it's from the... Oh, it's not 80s, it's 90s. Okay. So, not only is the format somewhat uh, difficult to, to eat or to parse and process, it's all dates and times. And you'll notice that I don't know about you, but a lot of my meetings are recurring meetings. So my mm -hmm. meetings, so somebody will schedule a meeting. They may have scheduled that meeting six months ago, but it's been recurring. Well, <laughs> those don't show up in the ICS as like if I've got a meeting that was scheduled six months ago, it shows that it was scheduled six months ago. And it uses something called an R rule that show here. In fact, there's one right here. There is an R rule here. And an R rule is a recurrence rule. Which means you end up doing a bunch of math to go and figure out, okay, so I have a yearly, an annual meeting. I have no idea what this meeting is, by the way. I have an annual meeting that is once a year on in November. Yes. <laughs> like, no idea what that's all about. Is that so anyway, one to one? <laughs> <laughs> so... Further, complica further complicating things is that all of the different providers do this a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So, like an ICS that's generated... Oh, you know what? You're right. It probably is somebody's birthday. Uh, Rocket Man. Um, complicating this further is the fact that not every provider generates an ICS the same way. So there are things like TZID, which use names. There's also uh, another, uh, something called a, a V time zone, which is like a time zone object that you can then reference in other ones. And so a meeting can have a V time zone, or it can also have a TZID on it. And the TZIDs are like, some of them are strings like this. Like this is a Windows, very much a Microsoft generated string of Eastern Standard Time. But then you have all those ones that like Apache or whoever publishes like America forward slash loss underscore Angeles. Oh, so you're going to have a full database of all these things to look them up. Uh, and I guess yeah. there's no API. So, well, so I found something called iCal.js. Um, and iCal.js is pretty good at parsing this, but it doesn't handle recurrence rules. It was a Mozilla project uh... and it's super old. It doesn't okay. handle it doesn't handle recurrence rules. Oh, we have that we have the new maintainer of the new project called JP. He's adding new features to the <laughs> iCal.js. <laughs> so somebody else made an extension for iCal.js that okay. handles recurrence rules. Cool, cool. Because nice, nice. when we first went through this, the website didn't show any recent meetings. And we're like, and we're like, well, why not? Well, all of them are recurring, mm -hmm. and so it was like, well, this is this is a problem. So first, that was the, that, so that was the first problem. 
But now the second problem has become if like we have to update a meeting mm-hmm. in order for it to show up again in recurrent, which yes. I haven't been able to pinpoint this bug all the way down. But then we also have the problem of time zones not coming up correctly. So like I had this up, a, I had this up a few minutes ago and most of these are okay because most of these were created on a calendar that uh, seemingly was uh, Pacific time controlled or whatever. However, mm-hmm. I created a couple meetings yesterday, and I'm in the Eastern time zone. And so since I created those, um, this says that our Dallas is going to be here at 4 o'clock. Well, actually, our Dallas is going to be at 1 o'clock right after our show because we're going to go raid him in about 20 minutes. Yes. And so it's like the time zones aren't being parsed correctly. And it's it's a complete and utter mess. <laughs> like, I, I absolutely, like, I, yesterday I spent 10 minutes figuring out CSS animations and stuff to make this work, to make the, the text like float around or whatever. And like three hours trying to figure out where this format, like where the bugs are between the format and two different libraries. If you, then, if you want to, if you want to help JP's career take off, please go on LinkedIn and endorse him for CSS animations, <laughs> iCal parsing, <laughs> and also office add-ins, please. This is going to be an amazing, an amazing stream coming up that probably includes all these things and uh, you don't want to miss it but please yeah, endorse him because we're gonna access yeah. database yes <clears throat> yeah we're gonna have yeah, a access. we're gonna have a kelly Rowland tribute show here in a few weeks <laughs> to celebrate the uh to celebrate the 19th anniversary of her and uh of, of don't, don't say anymore certain certain surprises so, there yeah, will be so a tribute gonna, though that's yeah. what we're saying we're gonna have a tribute 25th? show this summer is it 25th 29th it's july 20 july 25th i think I don't know what day of the week that is, but we, we will either we will either do a show on that day or we will. Anyway, um, so trying to parse this ICS file has been mm-hmm. a recurring Indeed. nightmare. It's because who knew that we needed dates in so many different places? <laughs> and then you get into like the time zone math and daylight savings mm-hmm. time. And it's just like, OK, like this is this is a catastrophe. We're not going to do this. This is a total mess. So. What I was thinking about yesterday was, this is awful and I hate it. <clears throat> yes. And so I think the better thing to do would be, let's see what Microsoft Graph can do for us. Because it is in Graph, and because we're essentially just going to end up proxying this. Right now, we're pulling down that ICS and we're parsing it client-side. Oh, you're calling that calendar from Graph? So now we're going to call it from Graph because I can't deal with ICS parsing anymore. No, I've man. I've thoroughly and ICS totally given up. ICS is awful. So in Graph, there are lots of cool things that we have available. So we have me and then we have calendars. So we can go mm-hmm. look at the calendars that I own or I'm a member of. And so like here's my main calendar, like my default calendar like for stuff. But then here's the 425 show event calendar. And it has a super long base 64 ID. Nice. If we take this ID and we go to calendars, we can then get this calendar specifically, right? Why are they not using a GUID there and they have this weird ID there? I don't know. Maybe there are too many calendars. More calendars than GUIDs. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not like a, like a promise that there's more GUIDs than stars in, in space? <laughs> or well, galaxies it's a, or whatever? I mean, so, it's, it's a, a what? fake it's a one hundred and It's a 128-bit number, right? Is, isn't it? Uh-huh. How many unique GUIDs are there? There's an event calendar. Is this public? Yes, it is public. Yes, it is. It's aka.ms forward slash 425 show forward slash cal, C-A-L. Or you can download the ICS if you're so inclined. Because <laughs> <laughs> at least things like Outlook and Outlook and iCal and all, all those kinds of things, um, Will work. We'll they know how to them. do it. Okay, so while each generated GUID is not guaranteed to be unique, the total number of unique keys... 2 to the 128th is so large that the probability of the same number being generated twice is small. Consider the observable universe, which contains 5 times 10 to the 22nd stars. Each star could then have 6.8 times 10 to the 15th universally (laughs) unique quids. So I'm pretty sure we... So I guess we haven't run out of quids. Maybe it's a base 64 interpretation or base 64 encoding of a quid. I don't know. Hmm. So 2 to the 128th is that number. I don't even know like where like what that's called. 
So 34 undecillion, 28 decillion, 236 nemillion, 692 octillion, 93 septillion, 846 sextillion, 346 <laughs> quintillion, 337 quadrillion, 460 trillion, 743 billion, 177 million unique calendars. Now, given the way people are about email and calendars at Microsoft, it's possible they have gone over that number. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. On so, exchange is big. So anyway, it's it's this it's a long ID, right? Okay. <laughs> that's that's pretty good, Avogadro. Maybe we should do this. Um, it's my, it's so, International Math Day on the Forty Five Show. It's what? It's what? International Math Day on the Forty Five Show. That's right. Um, so anyway. My thought was, well, let's go to Graph and get this. So Graph has this, uh, in Graph, we, you can get calendars. You can also get other calendars. Um, and it has a lot of the same data in it, whatever. And there's an events path on it, and the events path mm -hmm. gets you the events. The problem with the okay. events is that it still requires us to do a lot of math. And I don't want to do any date math because date math is miserable. And we're an international show. So we have to deal with lots of different time zones every day, and I don't want to deal with that. So there's a really cool thing in here called Calendar View. And, and the calendar view path uh -huh. has a start time and an end time. And so you also, give it you can a, start only for events that are today onwards. Yep. So you give it a start time and an end time. And before you know it, now you've got your window of time. And it just gives you the events that are there. So I already worked on this query yesterday. So I'm just going to copy this out of here and paste it over here. Your so, code is extremely small. <clears throat> well, that's okay because we're not. I'm not going to be in there today. So. The calendar view, I'll zoom this in a little bit. Calendar view um, uh -huh. is the path. And then we've okay. got start date time. So 2021, 617, which was yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday at new, yesterday midnight UTC. Um, okay. Should be zero, zero for UTC. Uh, and then ending on seven, one, which is next week sometime, midnight UTC. And then we're just going to get okay. subject start and location. If we run this query, we have now exactly what we need, which is the meetings that are happening in the next week for me. Very nice. Or, or on this calendar. Very so we have, you know, we've got, and we've got the location and we've got the start time and we've got, and it's even got a time zone in it, which is super, super helpful. Mm -hmm. So that's 17 o'clock UTC, which for me is going to be 1 p.m., which is about 13 minutes from now. Um, Next week, when we do Learn Live, that's going to be on there too. And then we've got our other Learn Live. And we've got, you know, so all these things that are coming up, these are in the correct order, uh, which is fantastic. Because now, so now we have a source. So what this do we is, need to do to get it in the animation? So there are two other things, two problems that we have to encounter, or two problems that we have to cope with. Now, this is a Microsoft calendar, which means that it is in the Microsoft um, uh, tenant. And you can access it. Tenant. And you can't um, it, I guess. So, Avogadro, can you pass a full ISO 8601 date with a time zone offset? You can. Um, I had the offset at UTC on those, but you can definitely pass in an, uh, an ISO 8601 date as well. There you go. So part of the problem, there are two, two extra problems that we have to deal with. For starters, I don't want any of you to have to sign into your Microsoft accounts in order to view our website. So we have to have some kind of anonymous access to this calendar. Secondly, our little calendar rotator thing that we're going to have here on the stream is kind of in a similar place, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is if we were to create a new registration, so I'm just okay. going to call this 425 calendar. Yeah. If we were to create a new app registration here, you know, our immediate thought would be, well, let's go see what we can do application permission wise. Yes. M makes sense because it's an app that's going to be running. It's an API. So we're going to call this API from a function and we're going to call the function to get this data back. We're going to proxy mm -hmm. it through. Mm -hmm. The problem, of course, with this is that if we come in here and do a calendar, once we get to calendars, we can read, but we can read everybody's calendar and everybody's mailbox, which, of course, is a bad thing. No, nobody's ever going to let us do that. And it's significantly exactly. more permission than we actually need, right? Yep. Mm hmm. Uh, and, of course, we have to give, get admin consent. And getting admin consent at Microsoft is probably easier to get an act of Congress to make that than to make that happen, even this Congress. So this is a non-starter. We can't use calendars.read for partially because it's just way, 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 way overprivileged for what we need. Yes. Yep. 
So the other option is to use a delegated permission. And with delegated permissions, amazingly, we can do a calendars.read and we can do it without admin consent. Damn. So no, now I haven't actually tested 100% to make sure that this is gonna let us happen, but we're gonna try. So calendar read shared will let me read my calendars and um, shared, shared, calendars. shared calendars. And our 425 show event schedule is a shared calendar, so. I'm going to add this permission here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to grant consent because I can't. <laughs> um, now, this needs to run as in an Azure function or some kind of an API. Yes. So what that means is we're going to have to me or you or somebody with access to that calendar is going to have yep. to sign in, and we're going to have to capture and store a refresh token for that user. And then ultimately have to email them to say, hey, your refresh tokens expired. Please come and re-authenticate so I can work again. And in order to do that so if the function were to do or an API were to do and on behalf of it would still be authenticating as the as the app itself, right? So that's still a no-go, correct? Well, if we did on behalf of, a user would still have to sign in upstream. Correct. Right? So yes. In this case, and, and which we could do that, and it's essentially going to be the same. It's kind of the same flow, right? Yes. So what we're going to do is... Oh, we I like both ideas. Let's put it. Let's put the password in there. What, what's the wrong thing? <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? I don't even know my password. That's the biggest problem. I have no idea what my password is. R -R -O -P -C. ROPC. I haven't used it in so long. So... I mean, I could put my password up here and somebody could go try to sign in. They wouldn't be able to get in. I'm not going to do it. Like, you remember that LifeLock guy? He did that with a social security number. And then, wow. like, yeah, he was the CEO of LifeLock, like one of those, like, uh -huh. scammy identity protection kind of places or whatever. And he drove, like, you know, those trucks that have just ads, basically? He drove this truck, uh -huh. or he didn't drive it. I'm sure somebody else did. He drove his truck around that had his social security number on it. Because he's so confident that LifeLock could protect you regardless of what happens. Um, and when he did that, um, it apparently it was like a complete catastrophe. Like people, he could not get away from people and it was a total mess. So um, anyway, <clears throat> so my thought here is because there's literally no chance that we're going to get admin consent to read everybody's calendar at Microsoft, which we wouldn't want anyway. Mm -hmm. And certainly not for a, for a function that's going to be running in Azure with an anonymous endpoint. <laughs> um, my thought was, well, instead we're going to have a user sign in and we're going to cache their token long-term and we're going to cache their refresh token long-term because refresh tokens in a perfect environment, a refresh token would never expire. Yes. They do expire for a variety of reasons, uh, because mm -hmm. you changed your password or there's your your admin invalidated them, whatever. But it's feasible that this token could potentially live for quite a long period of time, like months, maybe even years. Before it expires, yeah. Before it is because the way that we do refresh tokens is every time you redeem a refresh token, so your tokens are going to be roughly an hour up to 24 hours old, your access tokens. I can't wait for a continuous access evaluation to destroy your access tokens. <laughs> so, well, continuous access evaluation should, this should continue to work with that, which I'd be super pleased about. And it would happen even less, which would be great because it'll be fewer storage transactions. It'll be cheaper. So every time we send in an access token, um, or sorry, every time we send a refresh token back to Azure AD to request a new access token, we get a new refresh token back at the same time. So we're always refreshing those. So if we go a long period of time without a refresh, without asking for a new access token and using the refresh token and by extension getting a new one, unless we don't go 90 or 120 days without asking for a new token, it should work indefinitely. And it won't work indefinitely because other things about my user account will change. Um, but in theory, it would last forever. And it's a cool way for me to be scoped to just me. And it's a cool way for you to be able to do other fun stuff that maybe your org doesn't allow you to do or whatever. So, um, oh, he says, don't you have a 45 show Azure AD tenants? Just put a calendar in there. Who cares about 
reading out all the calendars. I mean, that's a good point, but the problem is that we have other people working with the calendar and updating it and stuff like that, and they don't have a four to five show account. I mean, we could give them an account, but that would make life way too complicated. Yeah, I think the problem would be that users take the path of least resistance and they would say, yeah. okay, thanks for giving me that account. And then every few weeks, somebody would email us and say, I forgot my password. Could you reset it for me? <laughs> I don't want to deal well, with that. Well, we have SSPA, right? Uh, if you pay for it. SSPS. Oh, you need to pay for it? Yeah. Yep, you have to pay for it. So. Yeah. 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 Who's got time for that? Who's got time for that? I love um, it. Yeah, that's right. We, you know, we're not here to sell you things. We're here to sell your bosses things. But we're not here to sell you things. Um. Yeah, there's the event calendar. If you want to go grab the calendar link, that's a link to the thing. Replace Cal with ICS if you're really a glutton for punishment and want to play with an ICS file. Anyway, mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is we've already got a set of functions that run things like our uh, our, our Twitch um, Twitch bot stuff, which we kind of have neglected recently, which I fully understand. Um, <clears throat> so we've already got one of these. Uh, we've already got one of these that's going on. We've already got a function out there that's driving other stuff, so I think this will probably be a good place to put it. And we're gonna have to do, uh, we're gonna have to do two things. We're gonna have to build an MSAL cache, which luckily we've already got one that we can use with table storage. So we're gonna use our table storage MSAL cache, and then we're also gonna have to build our own redemption pipeline. So we're gonna have to build a function that's going to redirect a user to go and sign in, and then have a separate function that return that receives the callback and then handles all the MSAL work uh, to so get the cache wired up. Static web apps with um, with a, a function backend, more or less. I don't even think saying? I don't even think we'll need a static web app. Or, uh, oh, or just a redirect URI. Because all we're going to do is a user is going to hit the endpoint. Uh, we're uh -huh. going to redirect them over to sign in at Microsoft. They're going to sign in at Microsoft, and we're going to redirect them back to another endpoint in the function. Um, that's just going to process. It's going to take the authorization code, process it, send it back, get the token, fill the cache, and then we can just redirect the user back somewhere else, or we can just return a really dirty HTML of "Hey, thanks for signing in." Um, so we got to do those two things, and then the third thing we need to do is we need to trap on the fact that if a user was to fail, or if a refresh was to fail, a refresh token was uh -huh. to fail. We need to notify the user to say, hey, I'm dead right now because I have no valid refresh token. Please click this link or please come back and re-authenticate so I can get a fresh access token. So those are the three things we have to do. And then at that point, I can go from <clears throat> this absolute and utter monstrosity uh, that's building our cool little calendar view. I can go from that to something significantly cleaner where we're just going to yes. call a we're just going to call a thing and be done with it, um, and I can get rid of things like iCal.js, which would be a, an absolute that would be the best possible outcome. So we'll, we will work on that sometime. I don't know because what is for all this calendar work, I haven't even paid attention to what's on the calendar, so I don't actually know what's happening on Tuesday. Um, what are we um, doing on Tuesday? Geez. Is that Brady? Brady's going to be here on Tuesday, so we won't yes, work on it. Yes, Brady's Tuesday. here on Tuesday. We're doing a B2C with um, SignalR. So maybe we'll do this next Friday. Uh, I think Friday we've got Secrets Rotator, but we'll bump that in favor of this because I kind of want to get this done. And mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's a unique way to... Uh, I think it's a unique way. That's a good point, Bolt. We could always subscribe from one to the other. Um, the thing is, we don't actually have the 425 show tenant because our friends Daniel and Stefan have taken it. And with the sort of unnatural things that they do to their Azure AD tenants, I don't know how long this would actually work. <laughs> but here's the other thing. Natural, yeah. I've used yeah. a pattern similar to this to do um, presence updates. So the presence lighting stuff that, that, that I've worked on a while back, that has a similar path because at the time there were no application permissions for presence that didn't require admin consent. Um, so I think it'll be I think it'll be an interesting it'll be an interesting thing we'll get, we'll get a chance to look into like token caches and how they work and we'll get a chance to look at sort of the long term long term implications of that. So we're going to work on that probably I guess we'll work on it next Friday. Um, and uh, I think it'll be yeah, I think it'll be kind of cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. We're, we're fixing things and we're actually showcasing some real yeah. world challenges. Stuff that people actually have to deal with. So, um, yeah. yeah. And while you're doing that, I will also be working on a GUI based Python solution to authenticate users. Very nice. So it'll be a, a public client with a GUI. Apparently, it's very easy to build them with Python. Nice. They look very Windows Forms 2003 kind of thing. But who cares about that? <laughs> Bolt, the real 425 show. 425 show, okay. We're going to have to go and come up with 9,000 different names for our... Uh, so Underscore final, final? <laughs> underscore final, <laughs> underscore draft V2. So is our friend uh, is our friend Ardalis, is he up and streaming yet? I, I don't know if he's up yet. I haven't seen him yet. It's fine. We can uh, we can talk shit for a few more uh, minutes. <laughs> the forty five. What time is the workout, workout stream? stream? Well, I'll be doing a workout right after this one uh, <laughs> while I'm watching our friend or Dallas. So maybe I should uh, live stream it. You know what? I'm shy forty users on TikTok from being able to live stream there. Nice. I need 40, 40 followers. Come on, people. Everybody, Help me out here. Everybody call your teenage children and tell them that Krista's needs 40 <laughs> more followers. <laughs> There's no dancing. It's all tech. So don't don't set up expectations if they're if they're wanting to see stuff. All right. Well, what's the link? Yeah, what's the link to your to your thing? Oh, yeah. Let me let me give you that. I mean, you can search for me. It's my full name on TikTok. But I will give you the link as well. Is it Christos, da, 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 da. Christos Matskis or C Matskis or Christos Dot Matskis? Yeah, it's Christos Matskis. There you go. I'm putting in the in the URL. Okay. So there, go follow Christos. Hope the feds. Hope Christos. the feds don't get called. Um, <laughs> so you, so you can watch me working out, or doing other stream stuff. Hmm. Uh, okay, is uh, is Steve up yet? Our Dallas? Not, no, he's not, not there yet. Well, that's cool. We'll give him a couple minutes. Maybe he's, he's having some technical issues. I don't know. What's Maybe the so. what's the plan for the weekend? What are you doing? Um. Oh, oh yeah. I guess my dad is going to come over. My parents are coming over with my brothers and my sister. And, or no, my sister isn't coming because she's had a baby. So my brothers are going to. Oh, you're over. you're a new uh, uncle. Yeah. I guess. When did she have the baby? Uh, a couple months ago. So. Damn, man, it's been it's been months already. I remember last summer you were talking about getting together and yeah, got not three, everybody being vaccinated. I guess I have three. I'm an uncle thrice, three of my thrice. own, and my siblings have three between two of them. And my youngest brother does not have any kids yet. I have to say, having children is the single hardest thing I've ever done. Being a parent is the hardest thing I've ever ever even considered. Uh, it's insane. Yeah. So <laughs> follow on TikTok and then go and endorse JP for floating CSS and <laughs> try having twins. Oh no, no, I oh, could not. God. I could There's not. There's no do way. That. I could not. My buddy, so my buddy, a uh, guy I've worked with for a long time, he had four kids. Or no, no, he had three kids, and his wife wanted another, so they had twins. <laughs> Their last one. So they had they had five kids essentially. I, I couldn't imagine. Like, I'm the oldest of four kids, and that was too many. I mean, I love my siblings yeah. to death. Don't get me wrong, but four kids is four kids is too many. I have three. Live coding says uh, Dark Souls is harder, probably. Probably. But then again, you, Dark Souls, you stop and you don't have to carry on with kids. There's no break. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's unbelievably difficult. All right, our Dallas is up. Let's see if we can raid him. Yes. Let's do this. Does he have raids? Thanks everyone for uh, have, joining us. Does he have raids turned on? Because I seems like we can't. Seems like we can't. Do oh it. no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Raid channel. A R, A R D, A L I S. It says no results found. That's very strange. What? See if you can do it. Can you do it? Because I can't. It's pretty. Uh, I can try. Our Dallas. So I can see him on. I see him on the Microsoft channel. I don't see him on ours. Let me refresh. Hang on. So anyway, we're going to go over to our Dallas. Uh, Microsoft MVP, .NET extraordinaire. He's doing some uh, identity stuff today. And mm -hmm. we thought it would be great to uh, support him. So and maybe we can get the raid to work. There we go. Now we got him. All right. So hey, everybody. We'll be back. 
Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday to do Learn Live at 5 p.m. Eastern. Be back um, Tuesday, Tuesday with Brady. Friday with Christos' client, Python client. Um, and, and Wednesday we have our IT friends. And Wednesday our IT friends will be on. So, hey, have a great weekend. Join Discord, and we will see you all next week. Thanks for hanging with us. See you later. Thank you.